Why don't you let the writer answer that question? <laughs> so, each woman has a, is at a different point in her cervical cancer struggle in our film, and it really. So we wanted to have uh, some people who had been through it, who had who had gone through the disease and is on the other, are on the other side and can sort of be a voice uh, in retrospect talking about what they went through and sort of maybe even give advice to the other ladies in the film. And then we also wanted some somebody to be going through, like Kelly, who was going through the procedures at the time and live as you're watching it. Because then as an audience, we can also go along with them in the story and feel what she's feeling as she's going through it. And it's just more powerful. And, you know, Frederick really wanted to f make sure we we found that. And, we, you know, we, we looked. And then Kelly, we found Kelly. And, you know, mm -hmm. Frederick talked to her online. And she actually sent uh, sort of an audition video talking about what she just found out, that she had cervical cancer and um, talked about it. And she's, Kelly was so articulate and so she, open and just willing to talk about every little detail of yeah. what she was going through that we knew she was, she was the person that we wanted. We actually ended up following three other ladies who aren't in the film and because you don't really know what you're going to get from each, peop from each person. And one of the ladies, her name is Michelle Baldwin, we followed her and she actually passed away also from cervical cancer. And we, we decided to keep her on our own documentary. So now we're making a film called uh, Lady Ganga, which uh, is about Michelle's story. And it's a, it's a pretty fascinating story about her, this woman with cervical cancer who uh, broke a world record in order to make a difference and, and went to India. But a whole other story. Anyway, uh, back to someone you love, we, Kelly was going through this process and that was the main thing what we needed and then we needed other people and Kristen Forbes had already passed away and this became more about her family because we wanted to show what families have to deal with because it's a big thing it's not just the person involved it's everybody mm -hmm. that they love and so we had the family of Kristen uh, and then we told we tell Kristen's story in retrospect through home videos and um, and then we had the three ladies going through it and then Kelly and we felt that that was a fairly round, uh, full story that we could we could tell people with mm. with those people. And we also had all of the uh, medical experts try to get somebody from sort of each point of view from the medical side, including uh, we had a uh, Professor Harold Zurhausen, who is a Nobel Prize winner. He's discovered that HPV caused cervical cancer, and went to Germany and interviewed him and we, we we tried to get as broad of a perspective as we could on this and I think we I think we did. Mm -hmm. So just one more thing to add to this is um, when we looked at the problem of HPV at least in America we also discovered that um, it um, was a much bigger problem in the African American and the Latino community and so we got very lucky I mean we found one of the best advocates in cervical cancer in the country is Tamika Felder, who has Survivor, who's an African American. And she put us in touch with Susie Carrillo, who was, who still is, a, a Latina um, from um, Los Angeles area. And so we were also able to tell those stories through their personal experiences. And it was important for us to say that because when you look at the numbers, it, it's quite staggering. You know, um, African Americans in America are, I think, at least twice as likely to die of cervical cancer than Caucasians. And the problem is also um, a cultural problem, problem when it comes to the Latino community. Uh, cultural because um, even going to the gynecologist is not something that's encouraged in those families. And so all of this is changing, and that's great, but we wanted to tell those stories to, to help push the change um, so it changes a little faster. <laughs> And something people ask me often, it's not that African American or Latino women have a higher prevalence of HPV no. or cervical cancer, yeah. but they just don't go get checked up as frequently uh, the, the, in general, the numbers say. And therefore, when they do go in, it's generally late stage. Mm -hmm. And the problem with cervical cancer is if you don't catch it in the three phases of precancer, 
it's very tough to manage once it becomes cancer, mm -hmm. and the outcome is. That's right. Always, you know, but the numbers are the numbers from the CDC mm -hmm. are quite shocking when you look at how when you look at the, the same segment of the population. So you take a hundred women who have cervical cancer who are Caucasian, a hundred women who are um, um, Native um, African American. Uh, twice as many African Americans will die from it, and that's because less access to care. Um, I know, um, so th there's a lot of reasons, but they need to be informed. They need to be, you know, and services need to be provided for them, and that's what Tamika is doing. And so she's a big part of the film, and, and such a great voice for cervical cancer awareness in general, but specifically in the Afri uh, African American communities. Yeah, and obviously all communities need to know this. Of course. And, you know, that's also part of the reason uh, yeah. we also chose Vanessa Williams to narrate the film. We felt she really represented a, a perfect demographic of what we were looking at here. And um, aside from having a, a wonderful voice, she's also a really great person and really cares about the subject. But also, you know, the one of the important aspects of this are women over 30 and mm -hmm. to tell to tell them that you know if you get checked up keep on your pap smears keep you know getting checked up get your HPV tests and your your pap tests so we're not trying to make an alarmist film here and get people freaked out about oh they're going to die of cervical cancer it's not the case it's it's almost the opposite we're trying to let people know that you know HPV is something everybody has and it's something that if you take care of and you're on top of, you stay up with your tests and you get your kids vaccinated, it doesn't have to be alarming. It, it's just right. something that we can deal with kind of like it's a, a common cold or something at some point. It's a very hopeful film, I mean, because the opportunity is incredible. Mm -hmm. The opportunity to eradicate these cancers is right before us. And when people get educated and inspired, they do that. They get involved.